This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show. God, we're back again, bro. We are back again. The great Sebastian Maniscalco on the other end. I have uh, to say congratulations to you. I'll get to that in a little bit about something. But nevertheless, what's up, broski? What's up? Um, You know, another day, another pandemic. Just hanging out here at the house, trying to figure out what's going on with school. Uh, We have a we have a tutor, private tutor here right now, teaching Serafina how to read. Because I don't think we're going back to school anytime soon, so we're bringing it back. We're bringing it in house. I'll run a school out of my house for Christ's sake. I'll, I'll open it up. I'll run a grocery store. I'll run it. I'll run a park, a school. I'll make my house the epicenter for what we need. I'll, I'll do shows in my yard. Uh, That's where I'm at. I, I, I'm i with you. All right, Jackie, because she already anticipated school not coming back. To your idea, she got five mothers together that she knows were good kids and friends, and they're each going to take a day, and all the kids come to that house to learn, man, to be taught. No, no uh, hey, playtime. So each parent gets four days they, of their kid going somewhere else. So, like, like the kids are winging it themselves. If you're not going to teach them, they're going to fucking self-teach like like monkeys or some shit. It's fucking unbelievable, right? I mean... Well, that's, <laughs> that's what a lot of these people are doing. Instead of doing this e-learning, which seems to be virtually impossible to get a kid to stay in front of a computer for eight hours a day uh, learning stuff... People have taken this into their own hands, bringing it into the home and doing these little pods, like you're saying, getting getting families together, four or five different kids. So, uh, listen, yeah. if this goes well, it put the schools out of business. I'll t- tell you right now, I'll get my <laughs> school tax bill and laugh as I shred it up and use it for kindling, right? Why not? Why would we pay school taxes if we're doing all the, all the teaching? I know. I, I, pretty, I, pretty soon, pretty soon, we're going to be paving our own streets, bro. <laughs> put it this way: your child would not know what a charcuterie plate was just through the public school system, but with you, <laughs> she'll be able to tell you what every meat and cheese is on that thing by third grade. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. Oh man! So yeah, we're bringing it in house. I'm going to get the review. I don't know if you've gone through this, and I'm obviously you have with Sadie, like, uh, you know. As Serafina gets older, obviously her her capacity for learning begins to grow, and we're we're getting the analysis right after the cast on how well she, well or how bad she is. You ever get like the assessment from the teacher where they bring you in and go, Sadie's really good at reading comprehension. Yeah, yeah. she could use some work with sure. playing with. Uh, you, ever, you ever get that? Sure. I'm, I'm wait. I'm waiting for a stellar review. Oh, uh, you're gonna get it, bro. You're gonna get it. <laughs> I I've been around your daughter a few times. She carries herself a year or two older than her actual age already. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> well, there's another thing. What is she gonna tell me? She's not good. She's getting paid by the hour. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a slippery slope, right? On one hand, she doesn't want to say the kid don't need my work anymore, but on the other hand, you don't want to insult. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that should be interesting. And when does that happen today? Yeah, she's going to the school right now or whatever uh, they're doing downstairs. Uh, uh, they're doing reading, so we're gonna get we're gonna get the review. I told Lana to text me while when uh, when the review is over to see, and we might get this in real time on the cast to see how Serafina did. Um, I wanted to open it up some something different here. Love it. I'm not I'm not really a game guy, but I, I thought this would be a little interesting. Maybe we'll spawn some conversation here. All right. Uh, what do you got, bro? <sighs> Look at I wanna, this. I, I want to ask you a couple questions. A few questions in regards to Amazon. All right. All right. And uh, you know. With a couple documentaries that I've seen recently on Amazon and Bezos always being kind of prevalent in the news, um, I want to ask you what you think you could get on Amazon. I'm going to give you a list of items, and you could tell me if you could get those on Amazon or no way Amazon sells that. Oh, all right. All right. All right. I'll give the, I'll take a pause. All right, go ahead. 
Go ahead. You take a what? I was gonna say I'll get I'll take a pause for the listeners to play along in their car. I don't want to step on their answers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Can you buy a lemon tree on Amazon? Oh, absolutely. You are correct. Uh, bro, I'm, pr- I'm probably going to say yes to everything except a Russian hooker. <laughs> and even that, they got a, a blow-up doll that speaks Russian while you while you fucking... Uh, oh, come on. What kind of show is this? <laughs> Can you get a human fibula, a bone? No. no. You could get it. You could get a human fibula on Amazon. They sell them. All right, hold on, hold on. Like to collect in formaldehyde for your for your shelf, or like if you need a fibula for an operation, just a, a human bone. Uh, just you buy it. It come. It comes in the mail in a box. It's a. It's a but, bone. So yeah, but whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> like for the dog? What the fuck? <laughs> well, it could be for the dog, but it's just it's a bone from a human being. You could you could buy it. You could buy a finger bone, too. A finger bone. Are you serious? Yeah. But I'm yeah. asking if it comes like, you know, when you go to a lab and they got like a, a brain in that in that formaldehyde, in that liquid. No, no formaldehyde. It comes in an Amazon comes box. In with, with, <laughs> How much? With, $49.99. <laughs> yeah, you right. Get a bone. I don't even want to look this up because if it's not true, I'll be disappointed. I swear to God. $49.99, you could buy a human tibula on Amazon. Ship to your house next day. Now, my question to you is... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there in the paperwork when you die, could you start selling your body parts on Amazon? Like, where do they get the, where do they get the bone from? That's a like, good... Because uh, I, I actually just had this conversation with my in-laws the other day, and it turns out that they both are donating their bodies to science. I'm like, you're going to be on a, a slab at University of Buffalo and two sophomores are going to be looking at your ear? Fuck that. Right? <laughs> right? Isn't that what that shit means, bro? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't want me hanging upside down by my feet while they're looking at, you know, my spinal cord to see if there's anything they could do. <laughs> That's right. Research one. And then they go and, and save the tibula for Bezos. What the fuck? He's, he's got a deal with the universities. He takes the body parts you're not going to be studying. And even, what does this thing even come in? Like a nice wooden crate with like on, on a plate of hay or something? I, I don't know, but I'm tempted for the next cast to order to see how it's delivered and if it's in a case or. Or literally, they throw a bone in a box with some bubble wrap, and they ship it. I, I, and by the way, does it come maybe with a little card telling you about the history of the owner of the bone? This guy named <laughs> Jerry. He lived uh, just south of San Antonio. Uh, he got bit by a rattlesnake. It was unfortunate. But, I mean, this is a 40-year-old tibula. Like, I, right? I mean, where did it come from? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Is it tagged with the information of whose bone it is. So you can buy human remains on Amazon. I got a question then. If yeah. you got those human it the tibula and it came with a name of whose bone it was, would you Google the name to, to look to see a little bit about the man whose bone you got? I'd would I would not only Google the name, I would look at images to see if I could see the guy's leg. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe get a photo with a leg and blow it up on the wall. This is, this is that. This was it when it was kicking, baby. Oh, <laughs> shit. Wait, but, but uh, on the flip side, yeah. why would you need a bone? Like, why would you buy a tibula? That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, if like if it comes in a nice piece of glass and you got a cocktail party going on and it's getting a little slow, I mean, <laughs> just turn around and go, anybody want to see a tibula? From, from what? A human being, man. Fuck, bring it out, guy. Right? I, I mean, why, I like, do you, why do you get a vase? Why do you get fucking a painting, right? It's a, it's a piece. <laughs> I like I like how everything revolves around a cocktail party with us. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I mean, you think you'd be alone in your house after having the bone for three years and you're sipping your espresso going, I'm going to take a quick peek at the tibula. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. So, so you, well, this, this, you just threw the whole game off the rails, guy, because if you can get body parts <laughs> online, then I don't know what's up. <laughs> um, can you get a live snake? Oh, come on. Of course, you probably can get that, right? Can't get it. I looked it up. Live snake. Nowhere to be found on Amazon. Wow. That's surprising, man. Yeah, can't get a snake, but you can get a human bone. So can I you want, buy? Yeah. Good. And, good. He, and is that like a whole no no pets at all thing? Well, I looked at a dog. Can't get a dog. Yeah. Um, can you buy a coffin? Wow. Uh, wow. I'd say yes, and quite frankly... I think that's the route I'm going to go when the time comes for family members. <laughs> right? I mean, why go down and have that depressing conversation with the wacko that lives in the fucking funeral house? Right? What did it? What's that? Nobody else lives where they work. What the fuck is with that? Right? <laughs> they always live connected to that shit. Could you sleep with two dead bodies in the basement? I, that's, I couldn't even no. come over for coffee. Right? <laughs> Knowing, knowing that there's two bodies in the basement draining, draining the blood. Uh, no, there's no way. I, I, I don't know what that. That's that's a that's a job. That's uh, man. I mean, that's normally a family job, though. Middle of the night, you're sound asleep. You do that roll over. You know, when you roll over. And you think about things for a few minutes. You roll over, and in your head, you go two floors down. In my basement are two dead bodies. You go back to bed? No way, bro. Not comfortably, <laughs> right? <laughs> Damn. No way. No way. I, speaking of speaking of waking up at two o'clock in the morning, I woke up uh, last night. Not last night. The night before, and I thought a kid was crying outside. Yeah. We got coyotes. Wow. Two coyotes talking to one another. I don't know how far they were off the property, but there's another thing I got to worry about now: is coyotes entering the you the backyard. If you get a, if you get a little dog like the one I have someday, I mean you you'd have to you can't leave it out there alone. Those coyotes will come up and. That's what down. I'm saying. I, I got to look online to see if coyotes. And humans, what what the deal is with that? I mean, if I went outside at night and the coyote's in my yard, I get attacked? I don't know. But yeah, what if you accidentally corner the coyote? Is he going to, like, eventually attack? I don't know. I don't know, man. They are. They're pretty <laughs> badass, bro. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, I didn't like what I heard. It was it was a weird. It was a weird sound. I was like, it was almost like hyenas. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, oh man, what are they laughing at me? That's what I'm saying. Yep, they're mocking you, man. They're mocking. <laughs> so, what do we got? <laughs> can we get these coffins on Amazon? Yeah, you can get coffins and oh, you get a variety shit. of coffins. Again, here is my take on this. Yeah, Italians, generally speaking, are prepared for death. I don't know if you got the death talk yet from your parents about what happens when they die? Did you get this? or No, no, or I didn't. I know you did. I didn't. Okay, you don't get, hey, listen, it's all set up. The, the, I want to get the, the wake is at the, the Cumberland Funeral Homes, the cemetery, the plot is bought. Everything's bought. You know, like <laughs> Italian parents don't want to leave like a burden on their kids <laughs> uh, in yeah. death. So what they do is they go and do a pre-shop on their own death, right? And this this is for generations. My grandfather did this with my father where they went, they went to the mausoleum, they picked out the right. plots, everything was Shut paid, up. can told. <laughs> Yeah, you, so that's all you got to do is press a button and the whole thing is taken care of. It's like they, they give you a phone number. You call Frank. As soon as we die, 
Everything's in motion. <laughs> Did they even they already prepaid for the catering bill for the party after the funeral? <laughs> Don't worry, I got the cannolis. So it's a, not only paid for it, but the menu set. <laughs> they don't want you deviating from the menu. This is what I want. Even though I'm not going to be there, this is the food I want to serve in death. Man, that's it. This is my last party that I'm throwing. <laughs> See, now, I think you're right, though, about this. Partially, they don't want you to deviate because all it takes is, like, one son or daughter to have some sort of connection. And let's say, God forbid, your dad passes away and you're like, hey, I know a guy who knows a guy and I can get dad buried 50 yards from Sinatra. Well, no, but Dad wanted to be buried here. Yeah, but he didn't know he could be buried 50 yards from Sinatra, right? <laughs> some some crazy shit. Or, you know, they you know, you know, they, they, they argue about, I want him to be buried by where we live so we can visit more. No, that's why that's a good idea to, like, have it all mapped out yourself. And, 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 I, and I know we talk every once in a while about death, and some people might not appreciate the topic. However, yeah. I think th this is stuff that no one really talks about. In death, how many times a year should you go to the cemetery to visit the deceased? I know it's going to depend on whether it's a friend, a mother, a father, a cousin, what have you. Yeah. But do you, do you got to make an appearance once a year at the cemetery? What's your take on cemetery visits? I never do. I don't go to anyone's. You, do you go like to your, any? Like your grandparents. You ever go visit them? No, never. Uh, does, have, it even, does it even cross your mind? No, because I got a little photo of them and, uh, and a picture frame, two-sided, with one from them, too, in the summer and those two together in the winter, an old photo. Every once in a while, I look at it, I give it a kiss, and I think of them. Guy, I'm going to drive out to Long Island, go into this giant cemetery and go up to a rock? Come on. Come on. Do you do, you do that? Uh, I used to, when I was home, make it a point to go visit my grandparents at the cemetery. Oh, that's nice. That, I have not done that in a while. But, but here brings up another point. Yeah. And maybe, maybe this is happening more than I think it is, but... Do you think a lot of people are going to the cemetery to visit? Like, let's say there's 10,000 bodies in the cemetery. Right. What's the percentage of those bodies getting visited at least once a year? What do you, what do you think? Out of 10,000, I'd say 342. 342 people are coming once a year. The re so yeah, it's wasted real estate, man. I mean, it's really, it's, it's got to be. <laughs> there's got to be a president that steps up to the plate and addresses it. Like, listen, we are giving away acres for fucking nothing. How many? Raise your hand when last time any of you in this room went and saw your mother. All right, rest my case. It's ridiculous, man. I mean, everybody should be cremated and then sprinkled in their loved one's garden and you're a tomato. You're a tomato in their next fucking salad. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, oh not only God. you can't live where the grave is, then you don't want to live in view of the grave. So now that area is shot, right? You ever see a nice house? You go, oh, that's nice. Then you go, oh, shit, graveyard. There's a graveyard behind it. Fuck. <laughs> The guy I wrote with uh, uh, for the last show for Kevin Kevin James, the showrunner guy, he's got a big compound. He lives out in Virginia in a small town, outside of a small town, and he's got a bunch of acres. And on his property, I may have mentioned this on the cast, is an old graveyard way out in the woods. And, like, when it rains, it's starting. It's been there so old that it's starting that from be before the Civil War and Revolutionary War. His dog brought back a human bone once, you know? Oh, maybe so, that's where the Amazon got it from. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's a good point. Maybe they're doing that, right? But when do you just finally just, you know, put some topsoil over that thing and don't tell nobody it was ever there, right? I mean. Well, well here, Graveyard, what, went out of business? Like, when you say old graveyard, when when it's the last day of the graveyard, right? Yeah. They're going out of business. Do they just shut the lights off and walk off the property and just leave it, or do they do they dig up the bot? What the fuck do they do? Yeah, like do they keep maintaining it? I mean, 
And they go, everybody in here was dead in the 1800s. Nobody knows anybody in here. What the hell am I weed whacking around this fucking stone anymore for? <laughs> Well, <laughs> right. Well, what, what if you do? No, well, hey, my uncle was was in the Civil War or whatever, pre Civil War. I want to go visit his grave, and you go to the graveyard, and it's closed. Oh, visit his grave. Do a whole Wikipedia, your uncle, if you want to hear about what he did in the war. You gotta come to the tombstone, guy. The tombstone, it's faded. I don't even know which one was your uncle. They were all faded. You know, I mean, we got one in our, the old graveyard by us, right? So they got one section that's now a historical plot because a lot of the graves in there are from soldiers from the Revolutionary War, right? So, mm. you know, when you're in there, you kind of, you feel like it's kind of cool, you know, because, but again, you know, what? Uh, when do you reach a point where you're like, we're done here. I mean, no one's visiting these graves. They're all worn out. No one knows any of them anymore. And it's not just soldiers. It's like regular people. It's, I don't know. I don't know, bro. That's uh, you're, you're going like you're going grave. I know, right? I'm going grave. Uh, and, and my next point is on the Amazon topic of the coffin. Are you so unplanned with your death where? You got to hop on Amazon to get the coffin. Like, if you if somebody dies, you have the the coffin delivered to your house, or you have it delivered to the to the that's morgue, a, or, or what? That's a good question. Like, this is where we miss DJ Lou. If you right now went to Amazon and ordered a coffin, you know, are they going to be two to three week delivery? That's uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's fucking. What do you think I got a a, a walking cool over here, guy? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you got to purchase the coffin before you die? Because to your point, you know it, this needs to be either next day next or day. two day max. Two day, right? I mean, right? Because it's on that. Where is it in the meantime? It's either in the in the drawer, right? When they pull out the drawer. Oh God! I hope I. <laughs> I hope I never have to see somebody for the first time in the drawer. You know, <laughs> ever see that in the movies when they're hoping it's not the dude? Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that's got to be awful. That's a, what an awful experience that you got to go down there and they're going to pull out the body out of the thing and go, you know him. Oh, yeah. I, I know it's even worse if they go, no, and then they close me and check check the drawer of Bumby. There's like four of us. I'm like, oh, God, what am I? I'm like a Chinese menu now. I'm in one of these cabinet drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You know, oh, my God. You know, that's the thing, too. When I do die, when you die, don't you hope that you're the only dead body at the funeral parlor, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want the guy to be touching my face up and then do a bop over the carol and start doing a little... <laughs> <You know? laughs> do, do, Is that what it comes down to? I got two to my left and one to my fucking right guy? Jesus. Is <laughs> Is that what happens? Like, let's say they're going to prepare. They got, they got three funerals uh, or three wakes, right? Yeah. They got three bodies down there. Right. Do you think they do uh, one body and then, okay, send it off? Another body, send it off. Or do you go? Do you think what he's going to do, lipstick, and he's got three women, he does lipstick on all three <laughs> and then puts the lipstick away for the day? Hey, why put the face makeup away on one and then have to pull it back out on the other? Let me do all the faces, and then and then I'll do all the hair. Yeah, right? Here's what I'm afraid. I'm afraid he's going to be doing me, and then someone's going to come down, and they're Jewish, you know, they got to be buried in, like, a day or some shit like that. And they're gonna put a put a hold on me. But I like they're so corporate. As the guy's hovering over me, the guy's gonna go, put a pin in that guy, and, and come over here and wrap up Sid Sid uh, Horowitz. <laughs> you know, I, I or, want... <laughs> or if somebody paid a lot of money, right, oh, for the, the coffin and yeah. the whole party, yeah. and you just got the basic package, do you think you get a pin in yourself for going, listen, this guy just spent $100,000 on his coffin and the flowers to boot. You get this guy done, Pete's going to have to wait a bit. Yeah, yeah, you, you need to make this guy look alive 
before you even start to work, worry about fucking what you're going to do with Pete. Absolutely. That's a, oh, I'm going to get bumped. Now, that's a good question. So I got to put this on my list. I want to tell Jackie, buy out the funeral parlor. Buy the fucking thing out until they're done with me. I want the guy to wake up in the morning and I'm the only body he's thinking about. I don't want him to go, I got the two in the drawer. And then I got. <laughs> I don't know why we always go to death. But uh, it me. seems to be a funny topic. I got another question in All regards right. to the uh, the Amazon. Can you get 1,500 live ladybugs sent to your doorstep? Oh, wow. I would have to say, yeah, because you wouldn't have Googled, can you get 1,500 live ladybugs? Yeah, you could get live ladybugs at your doorstep, 1,500 of them. I mean, like, is there a business for that? Where someone's oh, like, get, is someone's collecting ladybugs going 1,690. <laughs> what the fuck are they? And then they go, what do you want for lunch? What the fuck? <laughs> One, two. <laughs> 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 oh, what are you doing buddy. down there? Amazon just put an order in for fifteen hundred. I gotta count them. Uh, oh my god! Does anybody actually count them on the back? Door? And what do you need? Or what do you do with ladybugs? By the way, I don't know what you do with them, but when you get them, like, how are you gonna know if there's a thousand or fifteen hundred in there? Eyeball it. Eyeball it. If you're, if, you're, <laughs> if you're in the ladybug world, you, you you probably can look at it and go, that that looks like more like 950. <laughs> Dude, Amazon is insane, bro. It really is. It's it's an unbelievable. I mean, if you would have told me 10 years from now that you wouldn't have to leave your house to go buy a coffin. Or have ladybugs delivered. If someone told you 10 years ago you could get ladybugs delivered to your house on your doorstep within 24 hours, would you go, yeah, right. I mean, come on. This this is unbelievable. Where is this stuff going? I can't keep up with the technology. Where would you say your head's at in regards to technology? Is it, are you five years behind, 10 years behind? Where are you? Oh, man, I'm pretty far behind, man. I'm at the point now, I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting for Sadie to get old enough to show me how to do shit, you know? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, look, we're pretty high tech with the cameras and everything we're doing here. But like, you know, the other day, Mark, who helps us with all, with all cameras and stuff, he helped me take everything off of my computer and then put it back on like bit by bit. And like at one point, he's like pressed down on the control key. And when the when the computer starts to shut down, wait a second, then hit this button, and then the whole thing went blank. I'm like, a guy, how do you know any of this shit, dude? Like you must I, I forget it. I, how are you with it? Are you do you consider yourself technology advanced? I, I I not not so much advanced, but I feel like I can kind of get through the day without calling a tech support line. However, I feel like there's so much more we could be doing with technology that I'm just not privy to. I For know. example, your your iPhone. Like there's things on your iPhone that would probably help your lifestyle out and probably help you out, whether it be through comedy, personal life, what have you apps that 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 you're not even tapping into just because you, you you just don't know i know so i i would like to definitely increase my capacity for technology over the next 6 months one of my goals that i have written down here uh so that's my little segment on amazon nice bro um, speaking of technology um, right, i'm cutting you off go ahead no go ahead I'm just thinking. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, I didn't look it up, but I saw someone announce it. You up to one million subscribers on Instagram? Oh my god! Sorry, yeah, one million subscribers on Instagram. I don't know what that means. I mean, that I don't means know. you're like, an oh. influencer. Uh, hey, listen, I was talking to Lana about this. I go. Am I supposed to celebrate 1 million followers? I mean, look at how time has changed. 2020, people are going to, what, post on Instagram, hey, I have 1 million followers. Thank you so much. Opposed to what, you know, yeah. World War One, in World War Two, you guys fight for the country, come home, they, 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 you know, they won the war. That's what you celebrate. Right. Now we're celebrating followers. Right. I, hey, dude, the whole country has become one giant cafeteria. <laughs> right. 
Who's the most popular? Are you hanging out in that corner of the room? What are you doing in that corner? My neighbor, not getting political, not saying sides. Let's just say he put up a sign for the opposite guy that I got one. He puts up a go, <laughs> oh, God, I, I want to tear that shit down in the middle of the night, man. And now everybody's putting up these other signs, you know, that are, like, bothering me about something. And it's just like, is it? If I... If I pull out your sign in the middle of the night and you get me on camera, like, well, what are we talking? Fifty dollar fine? I'm going to jail for that <laughs> shit. I mean, they're burning down courthouses. I'm going to jail as I rip down your sign. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's clap. Let's clap so they know where to take that off. Right. One, two, three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. So uh, I forgot where we were. Oh, by the way, you're right. I agree with you about that. But speaking of social media, my parents came to visit. And before you say anything, because I know they got this, this uh, I see Fauci at the baseball game, you know, uh, and I don't care whatever he doesn't have his mask on. There's three, two dudes with him. They probably, you know, whatever. I get it. We all do that. And he already got that. But it just bothered me that he was even at the baseball game. I'm telling my mother, but. This guy should be pulling his hair out going, oh, I'm trying everything. I go, he should just be like, I'm trying. And he passes out because he's so tired. And then he wakes up and he's fucking trying more. He's singing, take me out to the fucking ball game with peanuts. And my mom goes, oh, I went online to hook up to your Zoom show, or you and Sebastian Zoom show. And I saw one of his video posts and he was saying, what's Fauci doing? Doesn't Fauci have better things to do to be in a baseball game? And I totally agree with him. So I'm on the same page as you, bro. You apparently had had the same problem with that well no i mean i made humor out of it you know saying that you know this guy is at the pitch we got a pandemic this guy's the face of the pandemic <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and he's out and he's out having fun i'm not saying that you shouldn't have fun but we don't got this thing under control i said put a lab coat on get in a lab and start figuring shit out <laughs> Rather yeah. than, than, than you're in the stands eating Cracker Jacks waiting for a foul ball. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I agree. And listen, you go, you hold go. On. I got, I got, one second. I got to tell this the, this leaf blower. One second. Hold on. All right. All right. All right. Um, Your leaf blower has email? What do you, what? <laughs> Can you oh. hear that out there? I hear typing. No, it's just. Uh, by the way, let me. This segues kind of right into, and we'll yeah. get back on that Fauci thing. Yeah, yeah. This segues into um. Man, my gardeners. Yeah. Hey, they come yeah. twice a week. Yeah. They don't like. I, don't, I can't do this. 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 Wait, was it? Is there outside noise or something? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. You oh, hear it oh, out. I don't hear anything. I just hear no. Stop. These guys. Not only when when workers are at your house and they go on a lunch break, they find a shaded tree and you just kind of you see them hanging out under the tree, right? Am yeah. I? Am I? Am, that's kind of common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the, in their car, weather permitting. If it's not too hot, I see a lot of that. Okay, but it's a nice day to go under some shade, yeah. open up their lunch pail. And they'll knock out a sandwich, some chips, or whatever they got, right? These guys bring one of those tents that you see at, like, the farmer's market or a festival, you know. Oh, yeah. With, with the, yeah. And they set up shop. It's like. That's a, that's a they, uh, flea market tent. <laughs> flea, they set up a full flea market tent and sit down like like they're on vacation like yeah, yeah. yeah. it takes time to put the well, tent what, what, up what right? do well, you think the setup time is have you seen them they, they probably got that down to a, a five minute science right you get the chairs hector i'll get the i'll get the the, the tent and we got this can I do that? Is that racist to give names like that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to be woke, bro. I'm woke, bro. I'm woke. I got my light on five. My my light is on. I'm woke. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, these guys set it up, and they're under there relaxed. I mean, I got to give them credit. But, uh, you know, you're breaking your ass all day. It's hot, What what have you. 
but the but the break and the lunch that these guys it they look so comfortable. I'm sitting in my house going, I want to go out there, uh, I, right? I dude, I'm what's blowing my mind is you know some people someday aspire to have landscapers in general. I got to get out to this compound. What kind of compound do you have that it takes them so long they got to stop for lunch before they finish the compound? I mean, every lawn I ever see, they're zipping out of there within 45 minutes with you there, like, bring the tent. Oh, God. <laughs> After we do the south side of the lawn, we'll have lunch. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> By the way, That's Jackie like... did a hard request for a few more videos outside of the kitchen now. She's uh, got a good gander in the kitchen. We like to move to another location in the house. The house is absolutely <laughs> stunning, bro. It is just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we'll get some we'll get some other angles of the home. We'll send it to you this Damn. week. But yeah, man, this is unbelievable. They're out there with the, with the tent and they left the other day. <clears throat> and I'm looking at the yard and I'm like, "You know what? I'm going to buy a kite. I'm going to teach Serafina how to fly a kite." That's a good thing. That's nice. I haven't flown a kite guy and I don't know how long the thing came. Amazon. Amazon. Uh, <laughs> Why not? Right. <laughs> I put this thing together. You ever put something together and go, this ain't going to work? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking half the time, bro. <laughs> I think I even mumble a no fucking way with this shit. All right. <laughs> Put it where? All right, here we go. <laughs> it's one of those things where the directions came with it. Yeah. And, and it said like one through seven. And it it was no words. It was just pictures. You ever oh, get the picture? No. Yeah. I need to be told where to put it. I can't decipher the images. So I threw the, I threw that up to the side. I go, let me just figure this out. Right. I hear you. Let me you? eyeball it. I put it together. I go, listen, this thing, I had visions of this thing, me putting it up in the air and about 15 feet up, the thing just, just taking off on its own. No string. It popped off. That's, right, right. that's, that's what I'm thinking. Mary Poppins to be on the end of this thing. <laughs> I hear you. By the way, you ever when you can't get it together, you go, you throw the directions aside, you look at the front of the box, you go, I'll just go by the picture. Let me just look at the picture. <laughs> so did you get it together? I got it together. But, you know, another step I normally take is I go to YouTube to see if some complete nerd yeah. Videotaped him putting it together. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's unbelievable. You're like, who would do this? And thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on two sides of the fence. You're like, what asshole would do this? But God bless you, man. <laughs> what schmuck would do this? Rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind it. <laughs> Oh, oh god so so Serafina was sleeping so my plan was to do a test run with the kite while she was sleeping so I could kind of work out the kinks nice that's a good call I disappointed my daughter too many times because I didn't do that with things like sorry daddy couldn't get it to work maybe next time <laughs> Yeah, I didn't want to throw the thing up, and it kept taking a nose dive. So I'm like, let me work out the thing. Let me figure it out. So I get this thing in the air, and I got to tell you, I'm like shocked. I go, wow, this thing, this, this is working. Yeah. But what I didn't realize, and which I forgot, was the amount of maneuvering that you have to do on the ground in order to keep this thing in flight. It's not like you just throw up a kite and you let it go, and it's and just gonna go. There's wind adjustments. There's like weight that you gotta. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta lean in. Sometimes you gotta pull back. Oh. It's like fly fishing. You just do a little <laughs> pull on the string, right? Sometimes it's doing a hard nosedive on you for no reason, and you're trying to jerk that shit up. You got you got to get up into that airstream. Once you get up to that lovely airstream, now, you ever go to the beach, and dudes just got the fucking thing tied to their, their lawn chair, and it's just up there like a hovering seagull? I'm like, what the fuck? That's magic. 
And then they do that. I was with a family once. We put a kite up so when it gets crowded, we know where our, where our blanket is. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Holy shit. I could go two towns over for ice cream and I know where your blanket is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this, it took me, I, shit, I was out there for about an hour and a half to get a good 10 minute flight in. Yeah. At two minutes, this thing dove into the pool. I was uh, I was fishing this thing out. <laughs> I was fishing it out of the pool. So I was excited. And I don't know if you've ever felt this with Sadie where my God, am, am I cutting my head off on this thing? Oh I don't know. Um I was so excited to show her this thing. Yeah. And she came out and I already had the thing in flight. Right, Lana brought her up. This thing's up in oh, the air. Oh, nice. She comes out. She runs out. And I go, Serafina, you want to fly the kite? And she goes, it's going to go over. Like, she thought it was going to go over into the canyons. And she was worried that the, the, the thing was going to go over and fall. That's all she kept talking uh, about. She didn't, she didn't, like, want to hold it or she didn't want to do it. She was just worried that we were going to lose the kite. So... It kind of deflated my excitement about it because I was hoping to get that, like, oh my God, Dad, let me try, you know yeah, that? Yeah. And instead, I got, you know, bring it in. We're going to lose it. <laughs> right, right, right. But are you on some level proud? I mean, the Maniscalco was oozing out of it, a value of a dollar. Oh, you hear your father <laughs> saying that? You're going to lose it over the canyon. It was that, you know, bring it back over the yacht. She's already concerned. Oh, man. That's adorable, though. That's a girl. That's yeah. a girl, bro. My my parents were visiting, and they were talking about my, you know, my mom's up, you know, up there in age, my mom and dad. And I and I said, well, my, my sister keeps in touch with them all the time. My father goes, best thing you could do is have a girl. They always take care of you, man, because they always care, even about the kite, bro. She cares about the kite. Wait till you're 85. She's going to be patting you with a fucking <laughs> handkerchief dipped in ice, you know? Just knife you, you Caruso's gonna be golfing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, she, um, there's <clears throat> another thing I'm noticing about her. Like, we're laying down, right? We're gonna watch a movie. And she's on the couch. I go, you want a blanket? She goes, yeah. Put a blanket on her. I, and she goes, could you watch the movie with me? I said, yeah, absolutely. And she goes, you sit over there. Now, she wants me to sit on a chair, and she's on the couch. I wanted to lay down next to her, right? So mm -hmm. we could watch the movie together. Right. So I asked her, can I lay down here? She goes, I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> you sit on the, ch on the chair. And I'm like... <laughs> When is it? Does, does the does the daughter ever go, Daddy? Come here, like, <laughs> like let's snuggle. Like, are you getting any of that, or Bro, is this a personality thing, or what? I, I thought about it the other day. My daughter's seven, so this ship has sailed. She has never once fell asleep on my chest. I, <laughs> it's, oh, it's the opposite. Like, if I'm laying down, she's gonna jump on me. That's all she wants. Like, she'll jump on me to fight, but never. I mean, she'll sit next to me, like, and cozy up to me, but never like that. Uh, you know, what you always dream. Like, you know, you always see in the movies the guy sleep laying down, yeah, his yeah, yeah. baby sound asleep on his own. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Your daughter's like, "What are you? It's hot. You know, it fucking hover on me. You got your own yeah. shit right there, right?" Yeah, I read it. Three years old. She's telling me, "Go over there. I go over there. I want to sit here and snuggle." She's like, "Guy, we got we got fifteen more years of this shit. Don't 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 hit the gas pedal. We got plenty of time for that." <laughs> I love uh, it. Oh, speaking of Serafina, let me get real time update here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, sorry. I just wanted to get some uh some feedback on uh on her intelligent level. Um what do you got? How was the family visit? Was this uh corona six foot distancing mask or was it just a full full blown 
<laughs> full uh, blown, full <laughs> blown to the point where my mother said her exact words as far as all the hugging and stuff. She goes, I've had a good life. And my father goes, oh, your mother's already throwing in the towel. And then we all laughed. But like, so we all hugged and didn't, you know, we didn't worry about that. Um, you can relate to this though, right? As a, especially as a guy, I don't know if it's an Italian thing, but I know it's a guy thing. But when my father specifically comes, when my father comes, I, I, I try to tighten up. You know, my sister was coming, my mom, my niece, but you know, obviously you want your house to look good. But so it's the day before they come, and you know, I've done everything, mowing the lawn, this and that. So uh, the day they're coming, in the morning, I start washing the cars, and Jackie starts making fun of me, going, "Oh God, the president's coming." The pre you know, meaning my dad, and I go, "The car is a part of the the home decor. I can't have them pull up to, with a dusty car. You know, it's got to be just as tight. You know, and you you know you you make your house so perfect, and then when they ask you if it's always like that, you go, "Yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, even though it might not be, but." Does your, this is the reason I ask you, is, does your father do this? Because he gets there, right? We hang out. He's like, house looks great, blah, blah, blah. And then at one point, he's got his red wine. And as we're all talking, he slowly does the slide off. And I see him, and I go to mom. I go, there he goes, walking the perimeter with his wine. And he'll do a perimeter walk on my whole house. I bought... And, you know, it's 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 a pleasure walk, I put in quotes, like they just pretend they're enjoying, but they're eyeballing everything. What's what's my son? I'm judging my son by his house. And it doesn't have to be a big, beautiful palace. It's about how tight you keep it, whatever it is, you know? I think this is an Italian thing. Italian fathers, they want to go around the house and they want to find something wrong, right? Yeah. My father does this all the time a walk with the wine like you said you don't even know he's gone it's almost like where's dad yeah. and then you look in the backyard and he's always <laughs> looking <laughs> fuck exactly bro <laughs> you always look it up and then and then you come out and he, 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 i don't know if you've ever gone out while he's in this mode where you go what's going on and and then he'll go you see this gutter <laughs> it ain't supposed to be that way. Like, you know, like, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. what? Like, uh, right. you've looked at everything, but this guy found the one thing <laughs> that's wrong, right? Exactly. Exactly. And Jackie don't understand it. That shit's going to be happening. You ever have, by the way, you ever have this? My brother in law found apparently he had hornets' nests, bees' nests in, in his wood slats of his home up top, uh, behind the window shutters and they mm -hmm. had to bring in a beekeeper it was a whole big thing big story i remember the whole thing just happened so then we have some people over and he's there and at one point uh, we have similar homes old homes i see him looking around my house and i go to jackie oh you see what he's doing there i don't like when people do that when something's wrong with their house so when they come to your house they, they they're hoping you got the same fucking problem so they can tell you you know what i mean he's looking he's looking for beehives that's what he's doing <laughs> he's looking for bee. Oh, yeah, I had those, too. I had, you know, but I didn't have any. I'm just saying. <laughs> so it was a good yeah, visit. They, yeah, no, they, they always, uh, my father's notorious for going, uh, you know, this ain't going to last. This this plaster that you put on the bar, it ain't, it ain't going to last. In 30 years, you're going to need to replace. And it's like 30 years. <laughs> yeah, if that's if that's all you got, then come on, just enjoy the wine, man. <laughs> but you wanna you wanna make things so perfect, like even like this club we belong to, this with the pool and stuff. You know, um, there's two ways to get to it, and one way is a nice back country road that kind of takes you over a vineyard, um, and the other way is not as uh, not quite not as pretty. And uh, when my dad backed out first, we needed to take two cars. He, he backed out the wrong way, so I didn't want to make him turn around. So I drove the other way. And I'm like, even this, I was like telling Jackie, I'm like, now I, I want him to see the vineyard. I want him to drive and go, oh, God, look at this drive to the club every day. So it's every little thing, you know. <laughs> and then I dropped the balls, the last thing I want to say. And we went to this restaurant because it was tricky. They wanted to eat out. And it was tricky because you can't really eat in a lot of places. And long story short, we found this restaurant we told was pretty good. 
and we go there and it was horrible. I mean, there was like three pe- three tables because you got a social distance. And so it's like pretty much empty. And it doesn't, you know, an empty restaurant just doesn't have that energy, right? And the food is real bad. And it's, we eat and we've not chosen. It's casual, but not good food. So that night, my sister, we got her in a little guest bedroom right next to my room. So there's a, and the bathroom of my master bedroom is right next to her guest room. And the middle of the night, this hasn't happened in a while, but I'm known for it. Jackie hates it. I start sweating and I go to Jackie, oh man, it's hot in here. And she's like, no, it's not. And next thing you know, I'm like, I feel nauseous, right? So I go to the bathroom and I lean over the bowl and I'm sweating and I'm not throwing up. So then I get back up and I come back to the bathroom and I'm like, I, th- I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I still might throw up. And, and Jackie goes, dude, bro, is this insensitive? She goes, well, I don't want to hear it. It's gross. Your sister's going to hear it. Take a flashlight and go out back. Oh. It, I'm bro. I was in the middle of the night. I go. You want me to go out back like a fucking animal and throw up in the middle of the night back by the woods? I go. I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm going to my own toilet. She goes, no one wants to hear it, you know. And then I go in my toilet and I was trying to not be loud, but man, I'm like, whoa. And then the next morning, I'm sorry to gross listeners out. You know, my sister's like, oh, I heard you last night. I'm like, I'm so so here I am. I got my sister visiting. Saturday night, I, I worked so hard to give her a beautiful setup as far as a comfortable bed and all this. And then in the middle of the night, three feet away from my head behind the wall, I'm fucking puking up my goddamn nachos. God damn it. Wait, wait, wait was it food poisoning? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, you know, when you, when you get sick and you're getting sick and then you think about the food you ate and then it makes you even sicker. So I can't call it food poisoning because once I threw up, I felt great. I just had to get it all out, you know? So you got your, your family staying with you, mother and father too? They just left. But yeah, mother, father, sister came with her daughter, but my uh, brother-in-law couldn't make it. It was working. Okay. Now, in the morning, did you get up before everybody else to kick in with the breakfast? Or how did breakfast work when you have guests over? Did, did Jackie get up early? Were you waiting for them to come down? Well, Jackie a... makes, uh, she bakes a couple of uh, fantastic breakfasts. She's been baking like crazy, just incredible stuff lately. But she bakes like a nice coffee cake. And then, um, uh, so when they first wake up, there's, they just want coffee right away. And your espresso and the espresso machine. My father loved that thing so much when he came to visit the one you got me for Christmas that they went and got one for their own home. So everybody gets the Nespresso's. Then Jackie comes down and we fire up the eggs and everything else. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Take them out for lunch. It's a great visit. Great visit. So ah, that's that. Nice that's that it. Get, it's, it's nice that you get to see the fam. We're dying over here, man. We, this, again, with the leaf blow. What when you what what is going on? I don't, I don't know what the fuck. But what on, are you get, doing get, on the computer? Here, yeah, uh, I just told my wife leaf blower, and she's gonna go out and tell them stop it. Okay, oh. um, she's available. Serafina did excellent. Lasted an hour. Wants her to come back. Uh, we can have as much as we want every day, three days a week. Uh, you know, gentlemen. Okay, we're going private. Yeah. That means you're going to go with her, that woman. Yeah, we're yeah, we're going private. You, yeah. Did, I mean, I'm 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 tired. The kid has to see other kids. We're going to we're going to start having like play dates here with families that we know that's been that's you know, been uh isolating themselves. Um you got to do it, man. If, if yeah, you, it's it's we we're dying to see Lana's family, dying to see my family. Trying to make this all work. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a tipping point we've reached here, where there is no good news out of this pandemic. I mean, you think you would turn on the TV and they would say, "Oh my God, we've accept- the vaccine's coming out tomorrow." You, know, you, you, you're looking for something to hang your hat on, but it's more like. You know, you, you you turn on the news and it's like new symptoms, third eyeball growing out of your cheek. You know, it's like, come on, man, give us something that we could that we could. You know, it's so sad out here. We got restaurants closing that were were 
some of our favorite restaurants are, are, are closing and these people are going to be out of work. The 35, 40 people that work with the restaurants from bartenders to cooks to waitresses, waiters. It's oh, just, uh, it's just, uh, just, just disheartening, and uh, I don't know how much more people could could take it as. Um, yeah, I'm on a fast, by the way. I've been gaining weight exponentially over the last three weeks. Lana and I are doing a contest. We started yesterday. Yeah, she got on the scale, and I looked at her weight. She didn't look at her own weight, and I did the same thing. We wrote down each other's weight. And next Monday, we're going to do a weigh-in. And by percentage, we're going to see what uh, who won. One week weight loss contest. If I win, she's making breakfast for a straight week, which is a big deal because I got to get up. At least, and my breakfast, well, you should see what I made today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to my own horn right now. Yeah. For the kid, For the kids. Yeah. I do a mixed berry plate. <laughs> with uh, raspberry, blueberry, strawberry, and blackberry. Then I'm making my daughter avocado toast, bro. Oh, which yeah. Which consists of a nice slice of sourdough bread. Sure. With some oil, put on the grill both sides, take it off. I make the avocado. I smash it with a little lemon, and then I put the, the spread on there. I take a piece of uh, lox, throw it on there, oh. and I to top it off with a fried egg. Oh, my God. Your kid's eating like it's uh, some fancy French brunch. Holy then, shit. Then what I do, I don't know what the, it gets into me. I can't just do, like, two things. I can't just do that and the berries. Yeah. I got to go. Oatmeal now. I'm I'm doing oatmeal. Thirty minutes. I'm doing a full blown oatmeal. What I do with the oatmeal, I do four cups of water to one cup of oatmeal. I get that going. I throw a little butter in there midway through the simmer, right? To, just to infuse a little butter. I then take that out, top it off with some brown sugar. I mean, oh my god, this is for a three year old. Oh, bro, that's dessert. No, that's that's too much. What are you? You giving your kid butter at three years old? Fuck it. They they eat everything. They I, eat everything. I, I want to try this. I'm doing I'm doing a packet of oatmeal with four cups of water. It seems like a lot of water for the amount of oatmeal. No, not a packet. It's 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 loose. Uh, oh. Steel cut oatmeal. So you t you take a cup of that. Oh, you're doing like the raw oatmeal. Yeah, I ain't doing no pack. This is like I'm oh, making stuff nice. almost from scratch. Right, yeah. The only thing I'm not doing is picking the oats. Oh, man. Do you pick oats, by the way? Do you pick oats? No, I don't even know how you do that. Where do you do that? <laughs> Oh, 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 do you pick oats? Oh, I don't yeah. know. I, yeah, I think you pick them out of the ground, bro. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blown away by the oatmeal thing. I mean, the berries up front is nice. The egg thing blew my mind. But now this oatmeal with a little bit of butter to make it all come together and a little brown sugar. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Here's another one. I top it off on the plate. I cut a banana in half, and then I cut it again, and I put the two banana... Like almost in the corner to play. It's just, oh. I got to take a picture. I, I, I'm i sitting there going, what father is doing this? <laughs> no, that's a level. I, I, I serve my daughter breakfast on the weekend. Same thing. I try to make it real nice. And I even bring it out on a tray. And Jackie's like, why do you do that for? Her? I don't know why. I love to treat her like that. But this level that you're doing <laughs> Is is like unheard of, man. This was, is like I swear to God, I feel like I'm at the Amalfi Coast preparing dinner or b breakfast for for guests at the hotel. That's the, that's the way I feel the, while I'm doing it. The, but the, I mean, that's what it sounds like. And the problem is, you, you your kid's never going to be able to go to a Denny's with her friends when she's older. She's going to be like, "What is this fucking horse shit? I can't eat this." <laughs> I mean, where are where, where the, where the slice to the bananas going around? Oh, uh, so I'm doing that. Um, what else do I got? Nothing, man. I'm just. Uh, 
I got going uh, golfing tomorrow. Golfing is, you know, trying to do that once a week to break up the monotony. An old friend of mine gave me a call, said, Hey, I'm gonna go golfing Wednesday. You wanna come? So How's that going? How go- you feeling? How you feeling about your golf game, man? You still loving golf, wishing uh, without the yeah, pandemic? No. Uh, um, Loving it, loving it. Um, I got a new pair of clubs uh, uh, last week. Um, I'm going to try them out Wednesday, see how they work. Uh, the brand called PXG um, that's supposed to be, you know, like kind of the Rolls Royce of golf clubs. Uh, they, I was fortunate enough for them to actually gift me a pair. I didn't pay for them, which, uh, which is nice. And uh, I'm gonna go in and knock them around, and, and, and I gotta tell you this. That's that's that's. I know you don't. I have to. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. That's go ahead. Do you do all they need is one Instagram photo of you driving with one of their clubs, million views. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The clubs Influencer. ain't enough. You got yeah. You tell them put a hundred grand in the b- clubs with the bag, with the bag with the clubs. <laughs> then I'll swing you a club and do a little Instagram. The other day on the links. Anyway, what are you gonna say? You go. I'll tell you this. So I go for the fitting, right? Yeah. Nice kid. I think his name is Scott. He's telling me, yeah, try this, try this one, this and that, and this. And then it comes down to, do you want? Like a silver shaft, like a, a like a like a silver shaft, or you want all black, bro? I got all black golf clubs, including the iron itself. You know where where the ball. Hit. Oh wow! If if you're golfing now, this is my problem. Yeah. When I golf, I look like I'm on tour with the PGA. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I believe it. I can imagine the whole go up, the whole setup. Yeah. The, the whole thing. I got the glove, the pants, the match, the thing. I, I look like I fell out of uh, the PGA uh, golf magazine, right? Yeah. <laughs> my outfit doesn't match my talent. Right? Right. So right. I got the outfit. Now I'm going to pull out black sticks. <laughs> now, if you don't. Like tomorrow, when I go golfing with these guys, these guys don't know my golf game for for nothing, right? Right. I'm gonna show up, and I'm gonna look like I'm at the Masters at the third hole on the on the you know the chipping for birdie. <laughs> right, right. It's a slippery slope. I mean, do you show up with not such great clubs because you're not so great? I mean, you know what I mean? It's a. Uh, <laughs> Bro- you're it's a lot better. of pressure. It's a lot of pressure for me because I got to act like I know what I'm doing, at least on the first hole. And it's a crapshoot for me. So when I'm up there and I got three guys behind me watching me tee off, yeah. in my head I go, this better go straight. I hear <laughs> you feel you feel like the, they they judging you for the whole day or for your first first drive. Because <laughs> I feel if I, if I shank it, they're going to get in their cart and they're gonna start driving and go. This guy sucks. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and he's got the black sticks. Yeah. Well, maybe you could do that. Go any new clubs, you know, guys. Hey, so he always takes a little while to get used to them. I should have brought my old ones. I'd be driving it straight <laughs> down the fairway. <laughs> oh shit! Oh man! <laughs> we got the big show coming up. Yeah, August thirteenth. Big show through Zoom, bro. We're almost sold out. The I mean. Pe- do people understand, this, though, like when we say big show, it's not like we're having uh, Stevie Nicks on. It's just another show, but we're going to be doing interaction, right? It's basically this, this. We're going to, like, start it off with a topic or whatnot. But more importantly, you know, I'd, I'd say 10, 15 minutes into the show, we're going to start bringing people on yeah. and having conversations with them. They could ask us questions. Uh, there's going to be some polls that we're going to do. I mean, we got, you know, there's there's 3,000 people maximum for this thing, and we're off and running. So August 13th, 5, I think it's 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern, register. Uh, do you know offhand where you register at? Is it is uh, What's the website? Do you know? Oh, man, I don't have it in front of me. Hold on. It, uh... Yeah, and you don't have to talk, folks. If you just want to sit back, check it out, and listen, but um, and it's it's free, but it's filling up. And I didn't realize it had a max. You know, I thought it was just like, oh, I thought it was something where they go, they broke Zoom records. 
They, but apparently no. there's, a, there's a max of a certain amount, and it's almost full. So if you think you want to do it, it's August yeah. 13th, like you said. 5 August, PM the, August 13th, Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite, put in the Pete and Sebastian show, register. It's free. And there's no charge. Uh, we're going to be doing a live show where you could kind of interact with us and, and just have a good time. Uh, we've had listeners out there for the last seven years uh, along this ride and you know they want to chime in maybe ask questions about past episodes or just chime in and, and just talk it's a way to us to kind of get in tune with our fans and uh have a fun night doing it so uh go to eventbrite.com pete sebastian show 5 p.m pacific august 13th 2020 we will be live uh we will be uh, pete will be on vacation next week however we are recording a new episode again this week, so we are not skipping a beat. Pete will be camping, uh, but there will be a new episode out as well uh, mm -hmm. next week. Um, we are uh, very diligent about getting these podcasts out for you. Get uh, in the video. Tell them that you got to watch the video, folks. I mean, me and Sebastian are eyeballing each other. I was a little, at the beginning, uncomfortable, but now, bro, I love it. It adds to the laughter and the explanation. It's like watching a TV show. So go to either it's one nice. of the YouTube channels now. Mine or yours. I'm going to start loading them up, too. But right where they go to? Sebastian. Yeah, go to uh, go to my uh, go to my um, YouTube channel, Sebastian Mascalco. Uh, they're all there, Pete. Um, uh, you can go to Pete's channel as well. Uh, we post uh, three-minute clips on our Instagram and Facebook. So, uh, yeah, uh, check us out on video. Please share with your friends and family. I am going to see how smart my daughter is if she's learning to read uh, right now, and I'll report back on the next podcast right. how, the po uh, how the golf went and how the reading went. All right, brother. Good hanging. Take care. <laughs>